So uh, today's topic will be hidden causes of home ownership. I think why is this an important issue? Because a lot of people are thinking, um, since I buy my own house, right? And then I pay for it. So technically I'm not losing money. If 10 years down the road, I manage to sell at the same price that I purchased. So it's not wrong to say to, to say that, but then the thing is, uh, there are hidden factors, hidden causes behind that thinking that a lot of people don't realize. So today, our aim is to um, see what are the uh, what are the concerns behind um, all these um, stagnating prices. Because you realize, uh, no matter how much you pay, right, the, your bank account doesn't really seem to grow that fast. Eh? So today, let's take a look. Lah, okay? So this one is just an example of uh, how prices have, um, how price movement of the flats in certain areas have, have um, performed over the years from 2012 to 2018. But let's not look at this one first. Uh, we go to the concept behind all this. Later, I will, I will go back to this one. So. When it comes to home ownership, we have quite a lot of things where we are looking at. First of all, we are looking at the down payment, everything. So when we look at the down payment, that will be where uh, you are paying the supposedly the 25% if you look at a bank loan. Uh. So let's say if we look at the bank loan versus HDB loan, right? For well, let's say a HDB flat, in, we are looking at the HDB flat. And assuming we are looking at the $500,000 flat, and then if we choose to take a bank loan, we will take a 25% upfront down payment, and then a 75% bank loan because of our LTV ratio, that is the maximum that we are allowed to borrow lah, according to government regulations. So this is based on our loan to value ratio, 75%. And right from the start, we have, um, hold on, uh, let me just delete this line over here because this is where the causes are pretty much similar. HDB loan, we have 10% uh, your down payment, whether is it a uh, cash or CPF or this. Yeah, for bank loan, normally it will be the 5% cash and then 10%, not 10%, 20% can be paid by CPF like if you have it. Or up to you whether you want to use cash or not. HDB, you have 90%. HDB allows you to borrow up to 90% provided you qualify for the loan based on your HLE, which is the HDB loan eligibility letter. Okay. So, uh, First of all, we have right from the start, we have what we call the buyer stamp duty. This is the short form BSD. Anything that is below, uh, we have a shortcut formula. Anything that is below $1 million, that will be 3% minus 5400 for anything that is below $1 million. So anything that is on top of $1 million, you have 4% minus 15400. Okay. And based on this 500K we have, let me just calculate how much is the, uh, by stamp duty, 500K times 3% minus 5,004. This will be $9,600. And next, we have your legal fee. For bank loan, it will be a little bit more uh, expensive, but uh, comparatively not a lot. Uh. So let's look at maybe about 2,000. For bank, for HDB loan, it will be lesser, uh, maybe about 500. So legal fee, why are we looking at this? Because these are all monies that we are not going to recover no matter what we do. Okay, so this, all these are the upfront. We don't talk about the rest, like what resale application or these, those are even smaller money. So right from the start, if we buy a 500K 
flat. We already have, we are already looking at uh, $11.600. Okay. Let's say we are looking at the resale flat. Uh, okay, to make it easier, even a little bit uh, more easier. Then again, since we are buying a resale flat, yeah, I know this pretty well because this is what I went through. <laughs> 500 plus K resale flat. So, mm, yep, I walk that path. Next, we have renovation causes. And even for BTO, you can just, because BTO entry price is definitely lower lah, for those of you who are look, who bought Pongo area. You're looking at a five room, three, 400 K last time. Nowadays, the five room are getting more and more expensive. And uh, okay, let's back to here. Renovation will be, let's say you throw in resale flat, you have to do a little bit more. So maybe about 50K minimum. Okay. And then we add this together is about 61K. Right from the start, uh, we, uh, okay, before we even started staying in the house, we already lost about 61K into the house. And then let's say we are looking at a, maybe a 15 year old flat, right? And then 10 years later, assuming that we uh, 10 years on, uh, 10 years later, we sell it at a 25 year old. And then let's imagine it's a very good case scenario. We so managed to sell it back at 500K. We sell it at 500K, similar to what we paid last time. So that means your net causes right from the start uh, is still this amount. Uh, this is your net loss from the start, right? And then uh, the part that is uh, a little bit more tricky will be your bank. Okay, let's say if we look at bank loan, uh, bank loan is actually uh, on the contrary. Bank loan, you are uh, Actually, a little bit safer then, because we first of all we only borrow seventy five percent loan. That means we only borrow about three seven five zero zero zero. Okay, this is my loan amount, and then hold on, uh, let me punch in some numbers because I'm doing this live, so I don't really have a lot of slides prepared. Uh, I was just outside at the last minute appointment, so bear with me for a while. Uh, we look at 2%, 2.0% interest. Uh, for info, I took my bank loan for the past five years. And then uh, in first year, I got it at 1.58. And then the next two years, I got it at 1.68. And then now I'm on the fixed rate at 1.80, correct. 1.80% uh, interest rate. Therefore, uh, I think 2.0 is fair enough. La. It's already very high compared to what is what it is in the in the real uh, context. So based on this, uh, my monthly installment it is 1589. But this 1589 is not fully paid into my house. Eh. Out of this monthly installment of 1589, uh, now this is the part that a lot of people don't realize. On this 1589, we have the principal sum, and then we have the interest cost. Because why do we separate this? Because principal provided, if you sell it back, if you sell the HDB back at the cost price, that means I bought at 500k and I sell it 10 years later at 500k. This money I'm going to get back, ma, because it, this amount of money pays down my balance amount. On the other hand, uh, interest, no matter how much I sell, uh, is money that is not, never going to come back to me because the bank charges you this amount of money for lending you the loan. Therefore, 1589, uh, first, the very, very first money will be 15, um, no, my bad. You'll be 964. And then the other one, interest, uh, it is, actually 625. So assuming that, uh, assuming that I sold the flat at same price, 
this is the sum of money that I'm never ever going to get back. No matter what price I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell it at. So this one goes to the bank and then that means this one no more already. This is for my, this is my uh, 500k flat. Okay. So next, uh, I look at HDB loan. This one is a little bit scarier because first of all, I take 90% loan. That means I don't just borrow a 375k. I borrow $450,000 loan. And then HDB charges you 2.6% per annum for interest rate. That gives me my monthly installment. Give me a short moment. Uh, 2.6 and then for 25 years. My monthly installment, it is 2,000. You see, uh, if I take a HDB loan versus if I take a bank loan, my difference is almost about 500, okay, 450, 450 uh, difference when it comes to the monthly mortgage installment. Eh? Why? Because you have 2.6 uh, and then a higher quantum of loan, uh, whereas this one is 75%. Uh. So back to the same thing. Oh, this 2000. And 42, we have principal and the interest. And this, this is the part where it gets a little bit scarier. Yes, I'm paying a little bit more to my um, loan, my balance loan. But every month, I'm actually losing, uh, based compared to bank loan, I'm actually losing $350, a difference of about $350. For the same spread. So should I be taking a bank loan or a HDB loan? That one, I leave it to you to decide. Lah, huh? But anyway, these are money that I'm not going to get back. So based on this, majority of us, when we take HDB, when we buy a HDB, you go for HDB loan. Mah. So I'll go by this example. And then later, if you want to look at how much the bank side is losing, and then you just make your own calculations. Lah. So like, right from the start, if I just look at loan interest, huh? Every month, I'm losing uh, 975 for loan interest. And then I have my town council fee. Ma. Okay, not a lot. La. Maybe about 60 plus dollars. Uh, 65. And then I have car park. Ma. I park one car in the multi-story is about 110. Da. And then uh, I have property tax, which is, okay, la. for HDB, property tax is very little. It's only about... Mine was only about eighty-eight dollars, so if you, the one we just leave it out, one month only like eight dollars, or even less than that. So based on these three, we let's just calculate now. Nine hundred and seventy-five plus sixty-five plus one one zero. That means every month I'm losing one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. This is the amount of loss per month if my property doesn't appreciate, but. Uh, I cannot, cannot blame. Like, a lot of people still think that um, <laughs> the sad fact is that a lot of people still think that they are, they are, their HDB will rise ma, because they say, wow, especially Pongo, ma, Pongo, there's a lot of development. Ma, Pongo Digital District is coming up. Ma. Well, this one is coming up. Ma. The one is coming up. Ma. Yes, they are coming up, but there are a lot of other factors other than just transformation that determines the price movement of your uh, estate. So for example, are there a lot of upcoming supply in the area? Are there, um, are there any uh, road works? Because I have a client that is selling a unit that is in front of the road works and, and they feel that uh, the area is a very nice mark. Got, got Coney Island view here and there. But the thing is, uh, the buyers, not are they all uh, just so superficial? They just look at the view and then they want to pay high price. Most of them come in, they say, hey, how come I got road? Here, will that make my future value drop next time? If that's the case, then is that a good buy? And then if you ask me, I cannot anyhow say also, ma, because if I anyhow say that, I'll become one of those rogue agents, right? <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, I'll just pray that I don't have to uh, encounter this kind of question uh, because I'll be caught in the diamond. Uh. And then the other thing is, in front, uh, you see a block view, uh, but that piece of land, is the government going to let it go? Is the government going to use it next time they're going to build other things? So, I cannot guarantee if you buy a flat there for 500k, next time will it be at the same price? 
So assuming it's at the same price, all right? Let's say 10 years down the road. So let's say 10 years down the road, I don't lose anything more than interest and town council fee and also my car park. So 1,050 times 12 times 10 equals to, hold on, let me give some, let me do some calculations on the spot. Uh, there will be $138,000. That's before my renovation. Huh? So that means if I plus my renovation and buy stamp duty, which is 61,600, 10 years later, in order to break even for this house, I will need to gain this amount of money in my flat value. That means plus 500K, what am I writing? Maybe my finger got spasm. 500K. That means I need to sell almost 700K for the same flat in order to break even. Is it possible? Especially in a place like a, in today's market where you have so many cooling measures and you want to up a little bit. Uh, the government says, hey, uh, you all should watch your purchase. You all need to be more careful because right now, yes, the interest is low, but we want our people to be more prudent. Okay. Government says, hey, uh, so, you should yeah, watch I think your we have to be practical. La, whether be is it possible that right next now, time, yes, 10 years down the road, low, la, with the least eroder, can, can we sell prudent. for 600, 700K? That means I buy 500K. Okay. And then I sell uh, for 700K. Should, should be practical, la, whether is it possible that I think right this is going to be a little bit of challenge in today's market, definitely. Uh, I, mean, I don't have time today to, to show all this um, trend, but over time, in over the next few sessions, I think we will slowly cover that. But the trend now, honestly, is that it is very hard for us to see this kind of thing in today's market. Maybe last time we can show all this, but today, the market is hard. If it's not, then there won't be a lot of people going to the condo market. Okay. So, based on this, that means uh, 10 years down the road, Market. 10 years down the road, I have to sell at 700k. If not, I can sell at 500k. This is almost 200k loss that I'm looking at for each DB 500k. Oh, on top of that, this one is what we saw. Okay, let's just say this one is the loss. Um, or say I can take a lot. Okay. So, oh, okay. And then we have something what we call the a good insurance. Which a lot of people don't realize because we have the CPF or a mark. And then we have okay. CBF OA. If you don't touch your CBF, government gives you 2.5%. But if you take the CBF out to pay your flat, that will be 2.5%. That you have to pay back. You to the government for using the CPF, for using the OA. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's say 10 years down the road, you use about, uh, okay, right from the start, you maybe you use about, okay, so $100,000 CPF. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sound interference, uh, like sound issues. Uh, if not, then if you have, then just comment here. Uh. Okay, let me just check. Uh. $100,000. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of sound interference, sound issues. Uh. Still so bad. Uh. Then, if you have, then just comment here. Uh. Uh, hold on. Uh. Let me just check. Uh. Yes. Okay, my wife just, just told me that there's a lot of interference. Uh. Mm. Okay. Let me just. Maybe I didn't use. Uh. Lagging. Emil. Is it better now? Can hear? Oh no, so that means, that means my mic is giving me problems. Uh.
Okay, let me just give me a moment, ah. There you go. Okay, now I feel bad. Talk so much already, then. Okay, let me just try another one. What? Okay, let me just give me a moment, ah. There you go. Okay, now I feel bad. Talk so much already, then. Okay, let me just try another one. Okay, let me just give me a moment, ah. There you go. Okay, now I feel bad. Talk so much already, then. Making a lot. Let me just share about the size, okay, ah. Uh, I think this is better. So anyway, let's go. Okay, uh, let me just see if we use the K from the start. Uh. Okay, now if you bet. Let's see. Oh, so much we did it. Okay. Let me just share about the first okay. year. Uh, I think this is better. Oh, so by the way, government okay. is here. Let me just so see if we use the K from the start. Uh. Okay, now if you bet. And then the grant. Oh, so much we did it. This grant is the first year. Next time you have to pay back with a great interest. I think this is better. So by the way, government is Yeah, uh, let me just give out on the mic issues. I think I'll just get a better mic next time. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yep, I'm not using any mic. So, let's back to this. So, back to this, uh, $150,000, $150, why? Because we are looking at 1,100, this one is the utilized, uh, you write from the start, you utilize to pay, ma, assuming, uh, because I don't know how much cash you use. But let's say we look at $100,000 you owe that you use, and then you plus another 50 k the government gives you in terms of grant, proximity grant, CPF grant, that kind of thing. For me, uh. I got 50k la. so mm -hmm. we add out maybe it's our 150k so 150k you plus one point you times 1.1102.5 because it's 2.5 percent interest per year and then the first year you chalk up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that means after 10 years uh, the accrued interest is 42 $42,000 Okay, so this accrued interest after 10 years is $42,000, aga aga around there lah. And is this a cost? Some people say well, the money will come back to me, come back to OA. So it is not money lost ma. Yes, that's the key. That, that, is, that is true, it is not wrong. Uh, but one thing to note is that this amount of money, next time you want to sell the flat, your cash component will be lesser because this amount of money goes back to your CPF OA. That means right from the start, maybe next, maybe you use a 50k cash on top of that example. Lah. And then you want to sell the house and then you want to take back 50k cash, I don't have ah, because you have the minus of this one. That means probably you get back $8,000 cash instead. Okay. So that is one thing. And so that means you have $42,000 less cash to purchase your next house. Assuming if it's a condo, if it's a condo, you will have to fork out more cash definitely because you need at least 5% um, cash for your uh, bank loan before the rest of the CPF can kick in. Uh. That is one issue. Uh. So uh, quite a lot of homeowners are facing this issue of having not enough cash to do their upgrading and therefore they're stuck and this is a concern see uh, whether it applies to you of course if you are the kind that don't use cpf if you use full, full cash then it's good for you you don't have to worry about accrued interest and then the other school of thought is that this one you have to pay to the government for taking up the cpf so this one you have to pay back and then on top of that if you didn't use it uh, if you did not did not use CPF OA, actually the government was supposed to give you 2.5% a year per annum. That means the 500K, if you don't touch, the government would have given you $42,000 over the 10 years. So 
what is the difference? The difference is that one, you have to top up $442,000 back. Whereas the other one, if you didn't use, you are supposed to add another $42,000. So that means a negative 42 and a plus 42. So what is the difference? The difference is a total of 84K. So this is another hidden cost that you that a lot of people don't realize. Okay. So first of all, the thing to note is that you have your loan interest. And then next you have your uh, town council fee. And then you also have your car park. And then you also have your accrued interest. And also uh, your buyer stamp duty. And also renovation. And in this case, just now we take a look even before accrued interest, these five components already added up to about $200,000. Okay. And this is just for HDB. Uh. For condo, it pretty much the same thing applies. It's just that HDB, the condo, we don't look at HDB loan. We look at a uh, bank loan. Let's just run a brief, uh, quick run through. Lah. Okay, but later, later I'll run through with you. Let's take a look. Okay, back to this. Finally, some slides, some visual, right? For Pongo, uh, five room flat in Pongo, in, for block six or six. Let me change a different color. Block six for six. Uh, the tenure is started from 2005. That means now this flat is about 16 years old. Not a very old flat, right? But if you take a look at how the price movement of this flat was, back in 2013, this flat could have sold for 590k. But uh, uh oh no, even before that, okay. Now 500, 200, 590k. But in year 2012, uh, at its peak, uh, those owners that managed to get out at the peak in, back in October 2012, they managed to secure $650,000 in terms of uh, flat value. But those that hang on, uh, they drop, their prices drop to as much as uh, to as low as $430,000. Based on this, that means you are looking at a loss of $230,000. Why? There are a lot of factors. One thing is you have your lease. Yes, it is still new, but compared to that area where you have a lot of MOP units coming up, you have a whole bunch of uh, BTO coming up. So there will always be flats that are way newer than yours. And then the only way for you to attract back these people to come to you to, to look at your flat is how? None other than to drop the price. Lah. Okay, so supply in this sense is a big key player. Supply is what is killing a lot of flat owners, but they don't realize it. They keep thinking that maybe the flat next time will will rise someday uh, because you know history has shown yes history has shown that property has appreciated but not anymore in today's market due to all the different cooling measures hey that one will leave another day lah. cannot cannot finish let's take a look Bukit Batok drop 80k because supply is we all know that Pongo is the one with the highest of new with the highest amount of new supply in the entire area so this one drop 80k uh, and then Red Hill, not so much. Uh. Red Hill because that area don't really have a lot. You don't really have so much of a supply. And therefore, uh, they somehow were able to maintain their value. So if you take a look back at Pongo, uh, if they can drop 220k, that means your actual cost of holding on to your flat for 2012 to 2018, that is six years. So that means uh, six years, uh, this one they already lost. 
before accrued interest. Or accrued interest because of, why I don't want to add it in? Because some people say, uh, yes, it's my own money. Wow. Then, I, do, then uh, I don't have to count it, count it as a loss. Up to you how you see it. Lah. But for me, I see it as money that could have been earned by letting government keep my CPF and helping me roll the money. So I, I leave it. Okay, I leave it to how you want to interpret it. 200 and 200k loss for holding on to the flat and then within that time frame I also drop another uh, 500k flat maybe don't drop 200 up 200, 220k because that time that flat was worth remember 658k so maybe I drop a bit lesser only 200k up and then for maybe a 500k maybe I drop about 150k I think reasonable uh, comparatively It becomes a $350,000 flat. Right? So that means my net losses is not just this, but this also. Right? Based on my actual paper loss, if I sell the flat, then it becomes actualized loss. Right? This one is the loss in value. And this is why I call it hidden loss. A lot of people say, uh, uh, people, I, I did a very nice renovation. So a uh, buyer will pay for it. Uh, yes and no. I think those of us agents on the ground, we will see how it really is. Uh, a lot of instances, we, we have sellers telling us, wow, you know, I spent how much? I spent 70K, 100K on a flat. Uh, and then I will uh, definitely look at the house condition. Uh, it looks so good. Uh, therefore, I'm going to sell it no matter what at a higher price to gain back everything. So, okay, no, uh, we can market la. and then you market every day and realize that buyers are not willing to stomach that kind of uh, price because they, to them, it's like, mm, yes, your reno is nice, but it's a little bit data. After all, it's a five to 10 years renovation. We still need to do our own renovation. So we are not very keen to talk about that kind of price. And that is going to, uh, unfortunately, drive down the <laughs> your value of the flat. La. We, we also have a lot of sellers okay la, to, we don't hit our price we don't hit our target rest we don't sell uh, true makes sense if you don't sell then you want to wait until the next while well, in today's market when the recent market is so hot and then you feel that you are, it is still going to appreciate uh, in 10 years time with uh, 10 years off the lease extra then <laughs> I think there's nothing much we can we can, we can stop you lah Okay, I think, but if you take a look, if you sit back and, and think about it, uh, I think you yourself will know the answer. Lah. Okay, so let's just move ahead. I show you the HDB already, for, but for those of you condo, uh, you see condo also not spared from loss. Uh. A lot of agents are telling you, hey, upgrade, 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 condo cannot loss, can lose money. But is that really the case? We have MV residences in uh, Pasir Ris area. So 2013, uh, you see peak. Uh, after that, uh, those who owner who bought at 2013, uh, what happened to their, the value of their unit? Okay, Because that area has quite a lot of supply. If we take a look. Uh, okay. Just show you the example of how we compare for the clients. Huh? Okay. Uh, take a look. Uh. You have MV resonances here. So you have MV resonances. And then you have Libya, you have Coco Palms, you have Pellet, you have Denes, you have Elias Green, you also have Belisa, and then Reese Gandil. That you find there's a lot of condo in the area and when you have all these condo in the area it may or may not be a good thing why because if you want to increase the price people can always in the yeah in the other areas they can sell lower than you okay if they want if they really want to get rid of the unit and the other thing is there are newer condos than mv residences mv residences in the area okay so this is just one of the reasons why mv didn't manage to appreciate lah. Let's take a look at uh, the actual transaction. So back in 2013, those owners who bought, they bought about 1,000, 1,000 plus PSF. Uh, 
and then in recent times uh it has dropped to about 800 plus psf that means a loss of maybe about 200 psf if you are looking at a thousand square feet unit you are looking at a loss of 200k so is this a cost of holding on to the flat and they're hoping that the uh the property will rise <laughs> they want to relieve it to you the other example i want to show is the uh, the, this this condo called Silver Sea. I think very iconic for those of you who would driven around near East Coast area. Realize this is a very nice looking condo, very majestic. Uh, I myself been through the, been there before, and uh, I, I would say I actually like the condo. It actually looks very nice. But how come the the property is like this? How come the price movement is like this? Okay, let's take a look back in two hundred one three two hundred one two. People were buying it as high as even 2,000 BSF for a large unit. Eh? So this guy bought it for $5 million. And the rest bought it about got a quite, a little, quite a large range. Some people bought it for 1,004, some people bought it for 1,009, even 2,000. So up to how they, uh, they want, there's a lot of factors behind it. Uh, let's not go into that today. And most recent time, uh, we had, yes, we still have people selling for 2,000 PSF. I think it seems that those people who are willing to uh, buy that area for the view are very willing to pay high price for large square feet areas in uh, for a large square feet unit in, in that condominium because it's still transacting at five million. Right? So you see uh, over the past uh, 2012 to 2013, 201, hold on. Uh, 2013 that means a difference of eight years so if let's say see now the price range is also about the same that means assuming eight years are uh, the price movement never move much uh, what will be the cost so in this sense let's take, take a look at a more modest unit maybe about uh, 980 square feet unit we look at 1.5 million okay so assuming that the price didn't move much so at the same price look at the silver sea a 980 square feet unit transacted i got around 1.5 million dollars if based on 1.5 million dollars how much will my monthly installment be let me take a look huh? let me just do some calculations 1.5 million and then I look at 2.0 because I average, like I said, 2.0 and I borrow 75%. So based on 2.0 PA per annum, 75% loan. Uh, this will be 1.125 million. And then uh, borrowing for a 30 year annual. Okay. my monthly installment will be 41580 four, four, okay. out of this my principal and my interest will be uh, 2283 per month to my principal sum that means I'm paying down the balance loan whereas bank is charging me 1.8 per month to uh to borrow money from them so this is my net cost ma. and for silver sea i think the maintenance there is not going to be very cheap but we just take it uh a little bit more optimistic uh, maybe about 300 a month for maintenance so maintenance fees We have three hundred dollars per month, and then we have uh, mm, uh yes, property tax. Cause condo property tax is a little bit more, so we have to factor that in. Uh, maybe about hundred fifty a month, cause they pay by annually, but we divide by twelve. It's around there, lah. Uh. Okay, maybe even more, but we just try to be a little bit more optimistic. 
2325 per month. This one is my running loss if my property stagnates and does not appreciate. Okay, that is provided my property stagnates. Does not appreciate, which in this case, Silver C for the past eight years, it pretty much didn't really make money ma, based on the chart that we see earlier. Okay, yeah, what? it didn't make money, right? Because every is still going sideways, ma. unless you are very, very savvy, you manage to buy here and you manage to sell here, then congratulations, but unlikely, la, unlikely. Ho. Therefore, based on this. 2003 to buy a 1.5 million dollar unit at Silver Sea. Uh, this one is my actual loss uh, per month. Uh. And I hold it for eight years times eight years. That will be a total of times 12 times eight. That means eight years I already lost $223,000. Okay, now isn't this scary? <laughs> so does this mean that you cannot buy condo? Or um, yes and no, you can buy, but you must buy the right kind of condo. That one will be another big topic that we'll be looking at. There's a lot of factors. To be honest, this is the reason why a lot of us are saying it's very risky to buy resale condo because yes, it is cheap. You pay a lower PSF for the same location, whereas the new one is so expensive nowadays. But why are still many people flocking to new launch? That one we will leave it to another day. But just to give you a sneak view preview, uh, for those of you who know High Park, okay, those of them who, who bought in the High Park last time when it was more expensive than uh, Compass Heights, uh, look at how much, how many of them actually made money. 200 plus. 200 plus transactions made profit. Okay. They made profit and then none of them lost money. Eh? So why is that so? We will leave it to another day. Lah. I think we already overrun by quite a lot today. Any other questions? Okay. If not, then uh, I think pretty much that's it today. Any questions? Any requests for topics next time? Okay. If not, let's call it a day. Can thank you, thank you everyone for those of you who sat through the long calculations. Uh, I think, yep, it's quite interesting to see all the kind of numbers for those of you who are into it. And if you bother to really go and calculate, then you realize that how dangerous, unfortunately, it is to anyhow buy and buy wherever you like. Unfortunately, this is not the case anymore. Not like last time. Whatever you want to buy, you can make money. Now, everyone. It's better for us to be more prudent and do our due diligence and go and do up all our homework before we commit to a property. Okay. Yep, that'll be all today. See you all next time. Bye bye.